Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is free to claim on Epic Games until January 11th. MSI to launch gaming handheld device that will be announced in CES 2024. AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D has been listed in Europe which now has been removed. Also the Ryzen 5 5500 GT is available. MSI to launch GeForce RTX 4060 Ti Gaming Slim Monster Hunter Edition. And lastly, NVIDIA launches their RTX 5880 Ada Workstation GPU. Okay, so firstly we have the Epic Games Store and as you can see it's the Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is now free to claim. I've already claimed it, which as you can see it says free here, 100%. It used to cost 15 and and it's a very good game, I have to say. Like, I played this before and it's phenomenal. Now it is free in the Epic Games Store. So, you can claim that now if you want to play this on free. And well, it's it's kind of crazy that they're making the, these g titles completely free. And it, you can also, you know, get this right at this moment because the sale goes out at 11th January. So not much time left, maybe a week left. So you should grab it, right? Next up, we have something interesting from MSI Gaming and they're teasing something. So let's look into it. So it looks like, a, well, a gaming handle, isn't it? At first, it looked like a, a laptop at first, I thought. But it seems like it's a gaming handle because when you look into it right here, it says two joysticks we can see, right? We can literally see that. So I feel like this is going to be a gaming handheld. But we don't have to speculate that because already we have something, which is this. As you can see, WX not the X user here, Twitter X user here, uh, he has leaked this particular thing. And basically, it's, it, it is called Claw, MSI Claw, I believe that would be the naming. So, as you can see, this is the handheld. It matches with the alignment, the joystick alignment. And this is going to be a handheld. And the specs are also leaked in Gigbench right over here. So, we have the score, but let's look into the specs first. So, they're using the CPU, which is Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. They're going with the Intel here, not AMD, which is fine. I have no problem with that. And as you can see, the processor is a 16 core 22 threads processor. And handheld with 16 core. Um, that's kind of overkill in my opinion, but I guess 16 core is not really fully 16 core. There's a you know, P core, E core going on. So that is a thing that you have to keep in mind. The base frequency you're looking at is 3.80 gigahertz and cluster one, which is six cores and the cluster two, which is 10 cores, basically six uh, P cores, the per performance core and 10 efficiency cores. That is the case. And the maximum frequency you're looking at is 299.8. Basically, this is not accurate because, you know, the base frequency is 3.8. And a max is 2998 doesn't make really sense it isn't really accurate and well the l1 we, we can see here l1 isn't important we can see l3 cache which is 24 megabytes so there we have it and the memory size which is 31.64 we don't have to look into those because they're not really accurate all the time but the processor they're using is the intel core ultra 7 155h and of course it has an integrated gpu here so the igpu for that core ultra 7 155h so interesting choice of cpu they're going for meteor lake here but not sure if it's a good choice or not because because we can't really compare it and with anything because the score is right here 1610 in the single core and multi-core 9693 so can't really judge it we have to wait and see what this uh handle can perform maybe it's going to be competing against the uh, well i'm guessing the asus rg ally so yeah interesting Next up, we have Mamama underscore US just leaked these things. Well, first of all, let's look into the Ryzen 5 5500 GT. This has been leaked already. And the pricing we are looking at is 140 to 146 euros. That would be the pricing for the Ryzen 5 5500 GT. And for now, this is uh, visible. But the other one that I, I wanted to focus on, which is the 5700 X3D, which is not visible because obviously it was a leaked pricing that has been listed, but we can't really see it. But... We do have our very old uh, video cards here. So they have caught it. And let's look into it. So AMD Ryzen 7 5700 X3D, the box. Well, only the box. I'm guessing with the box, yes. Uh, you, you can see the price right over here. It's just 271 euros. So it's not a bad pricing, in my opinion. Like 271 for Ryzen 7 5700 X3D. That would mean that the 5700X will go down in pricing. That It has to, right? So... And uh, 271 for an X3D model, I think is going to be one of the, uh, I guess, more budget-friendly X3D uh, CPU here. Yeah, that has to be the case because 271 euros, not bad. In USD, it should be a bit lower than that. Maybe like a 250 to 40 USDs 
that would be the case you know when you convert it to usa not really exactly what i'm saying so don't quote me on that but yeah 271 euros i i feel like that's not not, not, a, not a bad price and here we have the amd ryzen 5 5500 gt which we're looking at is 137.9 so close to 140 to 146 mark so that was another leak there so yeah it, it kind of aligns so let's look into the specs first then we can consider how well it's gonna perform so uh, Ryzen 7 5700X3D, which is the Vermeer X3D based processor launch, still unknown, but I'm guessing it will be on soon because we've seen the leak already because the pricing has been leaked and uh, it was in the uh, retailer, so I guess they were prepping it, right? So 8 core 16 thread processor, we have the boost clock available, that's really strange, but 4.1 gigahertz, that will be the boost not much when you can compare the 5800 x3d which is which is going like a 4.5 gigahertz so close enough but not not close enough because even that matters so 4.1 gigahertz boost clock not bad and the rest of the tdp and igp is unknown so that's not really important i don't think that has an igp right yeah it shouldn't be so yeah that is what we know and what we when we look into the uh, 5500 gt gt is literally the first one i've heard i've never heard about gt because it's a sazan based we have to look into that and it's a six core 12 threads 3.6 to 4.4 this might become the newer entry level kind of you know the budget friendly one uh budget friendly G uh, cpu here which might not be uh as good as the 5600 because you know uh, the well the core clock does make sense it is it, literally the same but it is a 5500 gt so it would in terms of uh, architecture is different so it should it shouldn't perform as well as 5600 but should be performing better than the 5500 so we'll see about that for, for now on 5600 uh, or 5700 x3d is very interesting because it's a, the, the placement of that processor the price to performance should be very much uh interesting and appealing to most of the users here so i'm very much curious what happens with that next up we have msi and capcom they're celebrating their the 20th anniversary of monster hunter limited edition gaming products debut basically they're they're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the monster hunter uh game basically and uh we have a better looking uh page here this is a very interesting looking page they made our website so yeah msi x monster hunter they're collabing with their 20th anniversary and this game is not bad not bad i, I don't really like this kind of game so but some people do of course and yeah there's msi x capcom to celebrate the 20th anniversary of monster hunter they're revealing these products here and most interesting one is a gpu it's a rtx 4060 ti 8 gigs well look at that it's i, I like the aesthetics it's a monster hunter type you can't really see everything because you know it's a smaller picture you can really tell but the aesthetics is like a monster type you know well, you, you you know what I'm trying to say. If you are a Monster Hunter fan, so you might want to look into it. They also have a gaming notebook, which is a uh, Crosshair 16HX Monster Game Hunter Edition. So, interesting. MSI is it, revealing that. It's an already existing product, by the way. So, no need to really look into it. Just a design. It's uh, interesting. They also are introducing a, a MPG C790 Edge Monster Hunter Edition. So, that, I rate that. That is cool. That is really cool. Also, another monitor. Interesting. Well, this is the MAG 274QRF QDE2 Monster Hunter Edition again. So, yeah, this monitor is not bad. I've seen the reviews and it's not bad either. And now the aesthetics with the Monster Hunter logo. Yes, it works. And they also have a liquid cooling. MAG Core Liquid. Again, Monster Hunter Edition. Not really, nothing really look to look at. As I said, it's not really important. Uh, casing, same, similar. I guess you can, um, I believe you can literally... Uh, you know make it sticker and put it on not really interesting as i said and a controller interesting force gc30 monster hunter edition controller interesting so they have uh, they have a lineup of product here but the most interesting as i mentioned this looks cool rts 4060 ti and yeah i guess uh, if you're interested you might want to get that because it looks cool enough yeah and next up, we have something big from NVIDIA. They're launching their RTX 5880 Ada generation graphics card, a workstation GPU, of course. And, well, it's this is the first-party benchmark from NVIDIA. So, the, in the single precision performance, we're getting 69.3 teraflops. RT core performance is 160.2 teraflops. And Tensor core performance is 1100 or 11... Yeah, 1108.4 teraflops. So, yeah, this is just uh, basic uh, first party. Don't trust that because, you know, it's NVIDIA. 
and they're also bringing in these things like the nvidia 8 of this architecture we already know that and the third generation rt cores fourth generation tensor cores that's interesting 48 gigs of gpu memory so of course the workstation gpu what else av1 encoders nice and virtual edition ready which is the nvidia rtx virtual workstation software so you can uh, get the support for that and this is the specs basically the nvidia rtx 5880 which is coming with the 48 gigs of gdr6 with error correcting code which is the ecc memory of course and uh display ports which is the four times four times display port 1.4 cool and the power consumption is kind of interesting 285 not much compared to others so good enough and the uh, uh, graphics bus we are looking at pcie gen 4 times 16 form factor not don't really care but uh thermal active i guess and they do have virtual gpu support uh, GPU software support, I should say, which is the NVIDIA VPC slash B apps or NVIDIA RTX virtual workstation. The virtual GPU profile supported is the, well, well, you can look into the licensing and VR ready. So, cool. So, yeah, it doesn't really say how many uh, CUDA cores and, you know, stuff like that. It's quite weird. They should be uh, giving us more like a spec sheet because only in this spec sheet, it just says these things. We don't really know how many like CUDA cores it supports or how many tensor cores comes with. So that's kind of interesting they didn't include it but anyway yeah they did launch this card so you can get it so yeah i guess uh if you're interested in workstation you have an option all right this is it for today what do you think about the 5700 x3d what do you think what this is gonna align in terms of the market and the price to performance because i feel like x3d is already interesting another two more uh, cpus for the aim for platform because nvidia is literally planning to keep on making AM4 CPUs I guess so yeah they're bringing in two more 5700 X3D is the most interesting one because it's an 8 core 16 thread processor and it is aligning just below the 5800 X3D so interesting thing how well this game uh, this will perform for gaming we need to see later on but for now the pricing looks appealing so see ya